Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, we are on this meeting to discuss the um, master plan project that um, the city of Corth Lakes has undertaken for Centennial Trailer Park. Uh, my name is Jen Johnson. I'm the manager of parks and recreation with the city of Corth Lakes. Um, we'll go through some introductions in a second. I just will go through a few housekeeping things uh, to start. One, just to let you know that we are recording this meeting um, and that is so folks that were unable to attend uh, tonight may be able to uh, hear the information and provide comment um, at a later time. So um, we are recording. So I uh, just wanted everyone to know that. The next thing I'll ask is if um, you can mute your microphone during the presentation, then that would be great. Um, we will have questions at the end. Uh, and I know that the team will kind of guide everyone through how you can either ask those questions by raising your hand, um, or you can put those into the chat. So um, just I wanted to clarify those things a little bit. So uh, we'll get started on the, the presentation and, and I'll start first with the introductions. So once again, I'm the manager of Parks, Recreation and Culture, sorry, Parks and Recreation. Um, and we have uh, on uh, the meeting or in the meeting with us, uh, Tessa Smith, um, who is the supervisor uh, that most of you would be familiar with, as well as um, Leanne Blakely is also uh, joining us tonight. So those uh, we're the three staff members that are um, are kind of guiding and working with the consultants to uh, put this master plan together. Um, I will introduce uh, the folks from um, SGL and, and their team um, in a second. I just wanted to kind of go over a few things about the master plan and, and kind of what we're looking to um, at the end of the project have in, in our hands and, and um, kind of why we undertook this project. So uh, staff were looking to have a plan developed kind of that looked into the next uh, 15 to 20 years of planning for, for this property, um, knowing that uh, we need to um, invest in the property uh, and just trying to identify the timeline, the what the priorities are for investment, what uh, the user groups and families in the at the trailer park are looking for and identify any gaps in service, identify um, some areas where there could be improvements or where we're doing well. So that's kind of what we're looking for um, at the end of the day. It is this master plan process and um, the project itself uh, is something and where we are right now, I guess, is at a conceptual um phase so uh, we've done some work we've done some community engagement uh, we're doing that again tonight just to kind of present what what path we're on to find out if that makes sense from um from your perspective as to where we're going with things so um that's what Catherine and her team will kind of go over tonight and we'll be looking for some feedback as to um kind of what your thoughts are on on where we're headed so uh, our we are anticipating this uh master plan to be developed uh, by Q2 of this year. And then we would be looking to implement those priorities and those recommendations moving across a fairly wide um, a timeline. Uh, that means over the next 20 years, we would certainly be looking to have some short-term priorities and some mid-term -term and some long-term priorities. So uh, those will be identified within the master plan. But tonight, just please keep in mind that this is conceptual. Um, doesn't mean, you know, if that things will happen necessarily for 2024, uh, may not even happen for 2025, but just wanted to put uh, something together and get some feedback. So at this time, I'll introduce uh, SGL Planning and Design Incorporated and the principal, Catherine Jay, who has been leading this project. So Catherine, I will turn it over to you and you can introduce the rest of your team and, um, and go through the presentation for us. Great, thanks, Jen. Um, good evening, everyone. I was saying earlier, it's a great night to have a virtual open house. So everybody's tucked in uh, nice and warm. Uh, out of the snow. Um, tonight, 
I have with me uh, Shika Jagwani from our office at SGL. Uh, I have Craig Ferguson and Megan Easton from Parcel. And I have Ben Peachman from GM Blue Plan. Um, SGL, our team is doing the planning, the master plan work, um, coordinating the team. Uh, GM Blue Plan uh, is doing the servicing. Uh, they're looking at water, wastewater, hydro. And Parcel is, if everybody could meet their, mute their um, mic, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and Parcel, uh, they've been doing some economic, financial, um, also um, some information on um, different parks and the user groups. And uh, each of them are going to give us a little bit of a, an overview of the work they've been doing. Uh, Sheikha, next slide, please. So to where we're going this evening, um, we've done the introductions. You've heard um, from Jen, who's here from the city team. Uh, the purpose of the open house this, this evening is to let you know where we've been, uh, where we're going, where we are in this project right now, and to seek some feedback, some questions, any suggestions uh, you may have. Uh, outline in a little bit more detail, Jen touched on uh, what the purpose of the master plan is and, and what the objective is. And we'll, we'll give you a few more details about that. Um, a little bit on the background analysis. So what we've been looking at as far as historical data, um, what's on the site, uh, information to help us inform some decisions and recommendations. Um, the engagement piece, what we've done to date, what we've heard. Uh, we're going to touch on uh, the conceptual plan that Jen um, mentioned with some ideas and uh, you'll have a look at what that looks like, where we go from here, and then questions and answers. And as Jen mentioned, we'll have some instructions at the end that'll help you uh, either add your question to the chat or raise your hand uh, with regards to participating. Um, next slide, please. So as Jen mentioned, uh, the idea is to put a document, a plan in place that helps uh, the city over the next 20 years uh, improve uh, the trailer park lands, uh, whether that be through uh, replacement or rehabilitation of some existing facilities or uh, the addition of any new um, uh, works that, that may improve the property in the long term. Uh, the idea is to set a vision to help with the future operations and ensure that the park is sustainable um, for the municipality and the residents over the long term. As I mentioned, we've, we've done some back re background review and analysis. Um, it, we have done engagement through uh, an earlier survey that was done uh, last year um, and as well uh, through the open house and uh, any emails and comments that uh, that I know that um, residents are able to send uh, to staff as well uh, and then the overall purpose is uh, a plan but also what accompanies that plan is, is the implementation strategy. So a series of recommendations that will set out what could be done in the short term. And, and there are some projects that are currently um, being implemented at the site uh, with uh, improvements with the, with the boat launch. Um, also we'll uh, identify some medium, uh, medium term projects and long-term projects that may um, be much longer uh, and maybe more expensive um, to, to the future. Uh, next slide, please. So this graphic uh, helps visualize for everybody um, the project itself. It's divided up into three phases. Uh, we completed phase one with the background review 
uh, we did some uh, focus um, sessions with some stakeholders, um, staff and um, uh, contractors that work uh, at the trailer, uh, trailer park as well as a survey that was sent out and we'll touch on that a little bit further in the um, in the presentation we're in phase two right now so the draft master plan which uh, will show everyone as well uh, we're at the virtual open house this evening um, from today we'll take away any um, comments and suggestions and work to uh, put together the draft uh, recommendations and implementation strategy uh, and tweak that overall plan itself. Uh, and the next steps in phase three uh, would be to pull that all together, um, get uh, staff's comments and prepare a package to send uh, to deliver to council uh, for council's endorsement comment um, and any recommendations that they may have that they feel need to be added as well. Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we've done a, a great deal of background analysis. Um, Sheikha and myself, uh, we've looked at different documents that the city have with regards to uh, long-term strategies, the official plan policy, po policies, um, other strategy documents that uh, might help inform uh, the future of the property. As well, we all were out on site uh, at the end of October uh, and had a good uh, visit to see everything. It's it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful place, a beautiful piece of property. Um, so we're, we, we, are, we were able to see what some of the issues are, what some of the opportunities and constraints are, which uh, we'll talk about uh, as well. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Craig from Parcel. He's going to touch on uh, some of the background information that they did. And uh, then Ben will touch on uh, some of the background uh, analysis they did as well. Sure. Thanks, Catherine. So as shown there, Parcel, we were responsible for looking at the community profile, uh, an environmental scan, which is looking at other competitive trailer parks to identify any gaps that might exist, uh, as well as looking at historical financials to get a sense of you know, what was generating revenue and where expenses were going at the park to inform future conditions. So in terms of the community profile, we've mapped where uh, primary, the primary residence of seniors and occupants at Centennial Park based on the first three digits of the postal code to kind of get a sense of where people are coming from. Uh, and what we found is about 40% of uh, park users just come from four municipalities, uh, being Oshawa, uh, Mississauga, Kawartha Lakes, and Barrie. Um, but definitely park occupants definitely skew towards the eastern end of the GTA uh, with some pockets in the western end. In terms of historical financials, uh, looking back at financials since 2015, uh, the park, aside from the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, generally generated about four to $500,000 per year in revenue, with the majority of that uh, coming from lot rentals, unsurprisingly. And in terms of uh, expenses, I mean, prior to the pandemic, wages were definitely one of the largest expenses at the park. Um, now, since the pandemic, uh, with reduced staffing, uh, it's definitely been more on hydro as one of the, the primary expenses. In terms of the competitive analysis or environmental scans, so we completed a competitive review of other trailer parks within Kawartha Lakes that are most competitive with Centennial. So as part of this, we looked at service offerings, amenities, uh, facilities, and fee structures with the purpose of identifying potential gaps at Centennial Park uh, in order to improve service offerings going forward. So things we found um, in terms of operating season, it was pretty consistent at Centennial Park with other competitive parks. Uh, in terms of hydro, uh, most parks offered 30 amp service. There were a few that offered 50 amp. Uh, for an additional fee. Uh, most parks had full service and hookups at every site uh, rather than having pump outs at sites. 
in terms of rental rates, uh, Centennial Park was towards the lower end of other parks in Kawartha Lakes. Uh, with some other parks offering premium lots, uh, kind of earmarked for like waterfront lots or uh, larger lots that had a, a premium fee associated with them. In terms of looking at amenities, Centennial Park, the amenities there were pretty consistent with other parks. Uh, a lot had beaches, waterfront access, baseball diamonds, basketball courts, volleyball courts, horseshoe pits, and rec halls. Um, which is consistent with what's currently being provided at Centennial Park. In terms of gaps, I mean, some of the other parks offered things like TV lounges and lending libraries and convenience stores, um, which could potentially be a gap that could be considered as part of this master plan. So Ben, happy to hand it over to you now. Sure, thanks, Craig. Uh, hi, yeah, my name is uh, Ben Peachman and I'm a civil engineer with uh, GM Blue Plan Engineering. Uh, we're assisting on this project by providing a review of the existing water, wastewater, and electrical servicing within the park. And uh, so Ben, sorry to interrupt. Can you just, I'm not sure if you can just uh, change your mic, turn up your volume, do something like that. I'm not sure if it's just me that's having a hard time hearing, but, um, or maybe you just have a quiet voice, not a loud one like mine. That, uh, that would be helpful. Can, Thanks. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you better now. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Thanks. I guess just the mic's not close to my face. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll start from the top. Yeah, so uh, my name is Ben Peachman. Uh, I'm a civil engineer with GM Blue Plan Engineering. Um, we're assisting on this project by providing a review of the existing water, wastewater, and electrical servicing within the park um, and supporting the master plan process by providing feedback throughout the master plan on, on the servicing impacts that are related to the various uh, concept development alternatives that we look at through the master plan. Um, as part of the background review and analysis undertaken as part of phase one of the master plan, we reviewed the background reports uh, available to us for the park, uh, as built, drawings, all that sort of stuff um, related to the water system, the septic system, and uh, the electrical system. Uh, as Catherine mentioned, we also completed a site walk with the city staff and then we met with the, the subcontractors from the city um, to discuss the status of the existing infrastructure within the park and identify any potential areas for improvement from the perspective of, of uh, city staff or, or the contractors. Um, our team also completed a topographic survey of the site um, to assist in the identification of any existing infrastructure uh, and to uh, support the development of the concept plans. Um, and our goals, I guess, in, in phase two, as we move into phase two, um, is to uh, review the opportunities and constraints related to the existing water, septic, and electrical infrastructure uh, within the concept of the concept plans that we're going to look at a little further into the presentation. Um, and our goals will be generally to uh, maintain the existing assets where appropriate um, and maximize their remaining service life to so minimize any you know, capital expenditures. Uh, and we'll also be looking for opportunities to improve the infrastructure within the park uh, to extend its service life or improve its function over, over the next 20 years. Um, and all these goals will feed into the development of the master plan from an infrastructure perspective. So I'll pass it back over to Catherine. Great, thanks. Uh, and to just to note, so everybody understands that uh, this was a very uh, quick overview, all the information, the analysis, the background, uh, forms part of the overall document, the plan. So all this information uh, is in there. Uh, so when the draft master plan document is is ready, it will have all the details of, of all this work that we just uh, went through. Uh, next slide, Shika. Um, so just to highlight, all this information that we've been talking about, uh, the site visit helps inform how we move the master plan forward. Um, the online survey results, uh, discussion with uh, not only Jen's team, but other city staff, um, uh, opportunities and constraints mapping, which we're gonna touch on next, uh, and any feedback that we receive um, tonight uh, on any ideas or things that we may not have, have thought of uh, will all help to inform the master plan. Uh, next slide, please. 
So with the um, survey that Ben uh, mentioned, as well as uh, some of the background information and, and the site walk, well, we've put together um, what we call uh, opportunities and constraints mapping. Um, so what you have on the screen here is um, constraints, mostly um, uh, existing um, features or infrastructure. So you can see that there are two existing septic beds uh, one on the east, one on the west, that do provide um, some constraints with regards to um, what can and can happen in and around um, that area. Uh, there's some existing um, space constraints with regards to parking, which we understand is, is a bit of an issue, especially uh, at peak times uh, with regards to too long weekends. Uh, some of the docks, um, although some of them are, are being repaired, uh, some of them are reaching the end of their life. So we need to uh, figure out a good solution for that moving forward. Uh, as, you, as you heard from Ben, um, servicing and infrastructure is a big um, component of the master plan and concern, uh, making sure that uh, the existing infrastructure um, is either being maintained or planned um, to be replaced. You heard from Craig that we we did a survey of what is typical with regards to hydro. We know that that's a bit of an issue, so something else that uh, is being uh, looked at. Um, as I mentioned, there's a new boat launch um, going in on the west side, and you can see that on, on this plan. Uh, and then the site uh it's in the water so there are certain restrictions with regards to uh, the water's edge existing uh, wetlands and and dealing with any improvements that we may want to make in those locations uh, requires um, ministry and conservation authority um, to be involved uh, next slide please So as you can see, there's there's a lot of opportunities. Like I mentioned, it's it's a pretty uh, unique uh, piece of property. It's a, I can see why people uh, would want to go here for their weekends and holidays. Um, so there's lots of opportunities um, for uh, improvements, short term, medium, long term, uh, and this identifies. Uh, a number of them that that we feel uh, should be explored and either confirmed um, through the master plan uh, or uh, maybe maybe not maybe some of these ideas uh, are not uh, feasible um, one of the things we heard was about the entrance um, as you all know the park is split by centennial park road um, so it's possible maybe to create some kind of gateway feature or sense of arrival so people know that on both sides of the, the street, um, there is this uh, trailer park. Um, I mentioned the docks, that's, that's something we're looking at with regards to replacement, the electrical, the infrastructure. Uh, looking at, is there possible to formalize trails, uh, street signage, things that will give this uh, trailer park a little bit more sense of, of place. Um, some, there's, there's a number of trees that um, could be uh, reaching the end of their life. So, you know, we need to look at how we can um, plant more trees in the future. Uh, areas for play. Uh, and, and some of these uh, ideas uh, have been informed by uh, information we got through the survey. Um, parking, like I mentioned, is an issue. So looking at formalizing uh, parking for not only overflow um, cars on sites, but guest parking as well as uh, boat and trailer parking. And looking where maybe we could um, make lots uh, a little bit uh, more, um, regular uh, in size uh, and possibly add adding in lots uh, if that's feasible as well. 
Um, next slide, please. So as uh, it's been mentioned, um, from November into mid-December, there was a survey uh, that went out. Um, uh, we did hear that it is possible that maybe it went to some people's junk mail. Um, and so they, they didn't receive it. Um, so not to worry, this tonight gives you an opportunity to provide um, any comments as well. But um, what we did was uh, ask questions to gather information about who, you know, who comes to the trailer park? How often do you come? How often do you have guests? Um, basic information like that. And then uh, more detailed information about the amenities uh, and what you would like to see. So for example, uh, we did hear um, the importance of the playgrounds, um, the comfort stations, uh, the beach, the picnic shelter, they all uh, were very highly ranked amenities. Um, as well as even though the beach um, area uh, is important, we heard that there needs to be improvements to that area. It's a very small um, beach um, as well as uh, 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 boat or trailer parking and the improvements to the docks. Those were some of the um, uh, suggestions and feedback we got through the survey. Uh, next slide, please. This just gives you a little bit more detail with regards to um, the survey itself. Uh, most residents stay for the weekend. There are a few lucky folks that get to stay uh, up there during the week. Um, like I mentioned, the beach area is one that um, people mentioned could be improved, um, upgrades to the docks. Um, some of that is happening right now, but uh, looking to the future, what could be a, a sustainable solution, solution for docks in the future. Um, there was some mention about uh, the electrical uh, we, we do know that some of the newer trailers um, would prefer uh, to operate on uh, 50 amp versus 30. So definitely something that's being looked at. Um, how to address um, the septic and uh, sewage system. Uh, there's a general desire for seating areas, um, shade, and like I said, tree maintenance. Um, as well as there were some suggestions for um, indoor games, uh, as well as additional long games, which, which we have looked at as well. Uh, next slide, please. So what you're looking at here is what we're calling a preliminary master plan or con conceptual master plan. Um, this plan will stay as a draft master plan. Anything that we do is in draft until uh, council endorses it. So when we go uh, to council, this will be a draft uh, master plan along with the draft document. Um, and this uh, right now is based on, uh, like I mentioned, comments we heard through the survey, uh, the background analysis that the team has done input from staff, uh, the site visit, um, and some ideas that we just think um, might improve uh, the overall site. Um, so uh, I'll start, I'm not sure, Shika, uh, if you have your pointer um, there. So can everybody see that little green pointer? So th these are ideas and suggestions that, that are being vetted um, through the team and through staff um, and uh, through yourselves this evening. Uh, keeping in mind that as we, we move forward, what we'll do next is we'll look at the feasibility of some of these. We'll, we'll provide some recommendations and some costing and all this uh, information will then go to council for their 
review their um, comments, any recommendations they have. Uh, and then once they endorse the plan, uh, it'll get implemented over time with regards to how much budget um, is available to do different projects um, at any given, any given year. Um, so let's start with the beach area. Uh, so we're providing uh, an idea of uh, how this area could be expanded. Uh, maybe some armor stone along the beach edge to give a little more stability, uh, a little easier to get in and out. Right now, um, there's one set of stairs that doesn't look um, the easiest to get in and out. Um, also providing some shade, some trees. Um, so this is just a, an idea of, of some things that could be done uh, to improve the beach area. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go my clockwise. We're gonna go around to the right. Um, there you see all this green area. Uh, we've added in um, what we call walking trails, not only in this area, but in and around the site with some trail markers um, and uh, some signage, as well as some trees. And you'll see open play area. You'll see some little triangles there. That's representing the suggestion of a disc golf course. Um, one of the ideas that uh, the team has had that, that we're putting forward. You can see the boat launch, which is already going in. And then you'll see these blue lines uh, on both sides of the trailer park. This is the proposal of uh, future uh, centralized docks. Um, that will be set out further in the water, um, which is particularly um, to address the issues of low water on the east side of the park. Yeah, you um, muted it. But uh, the idea that uh, it would be easier um, to do. use, easier to maintain, uh, <laughs> and well, could be um, a better, uh, better dock product in the future. Yep. <clears throat> in the screen. Around on the path. Oh, Shika, if you can mute. Um, around to the right along the um, trail, we're suggesting where that trail is. There could be some planting to separate uh, any of the existing trailers um, from a trail that comes around. Uh, those gold um, squares are um, potential new lots. Uh, the idea that they could be permanent or in the future they could be um, seasonal. That's something that's being explored. Um, you'll notice throughout the plan that we have Street A, Street B, Street C. Uh, those are potential um, idea that we could name the streets. Uh, and then there could be uh, street signs to add a little bit of character and placemaking to the overall site. Uh, if we come around to the number eight, Chica. so in a number eight on both sides, uh, we're looking at how we can improve the uh, entrance um, to both sides of the park, making access easier for residents as well as providing guest parking. So guest parking would be outside the, um, the gates. Uh, and then uh, I understand that currently um, residents uh, access with a pass card so that you would have that same access uh, as well. Uh, let's go around to the number eight at the, the boat trailer. Um, and then we'll go on the other side. Uh, so you'll see uh, an area where a boat trailer uh, potential um, parking overflow could be uh, more formalized. Right now it's kind of an old gravel area that's got some old trucks and boats. Um, so this area could be uh, formalized for um, storage of boat trailers. Um, as well, uh, you'll see those green green lots there. It's 
the creation of some uh, new lots to replace where um, right now there's an empty lot where you see those three trees. And we understand uh, on the other side of street A that um, some of the sites aren't big enough um, or have issues with parking. And this site um, currently remains vacant. So opportunity to put some parking there for other sites um, and create a few additional lots. If we go on the um, other side uh, now, Shika, um, you'll see number five. Number five represents um, looking at the hydro. So um, because this is a visual plan, uh, we're just graphically showing um, uh, that that um, could be addressed. Um, as well, the street signs on this side, the idea of a, of a walking loop um, and additional formalized um, parking. You'll see the number eight. So um, some additional parking down by where the future docks could be centralized um, and uh, over towards the um, yeah, left side there. So boat trailer parking could be there. <clears throat> There's a number of, of things that you, you don't actually see on the plan. Um, so for example, um, the suggestion of horseshoes, um, like a horseshoe area could be um, put in the different green areas. Like I mentioned, um, the idea of the disc golf, um, various seating, uh, additional trees. That the, there's those green circles as well as we're looking at uh, an overall tree plan that could be a layer to this plan. Um, and the little um, yellow circles uh, represent the possibility of lighting, which is being explored as well. Um, and um, the possibility of uh, refreshing the, the rec building, which uh, I believe is number four near the office there, that little pink square, um, as well as um, possibly uh, refreshing the multi-use court so that it could be used for different items as well. Covered seating, uh, that was one thing that we heard as well. You'll see there's uh, a little image there of uh, what the covered seating could be. So there could be a few of those in the trailer park. Just looking to see if I've missed anything. If, if the team thinks that I've missed anything of importance, please let me know, because there's a lot to digest on this. <laughs> And I, I think for the most part, um, I've captured uh, the main parts of, of some of the recommendations, suggestions, you know, comments that we've heard. Um, also too, um, after uh, this evening, um, if anybody wants a copy of the presentation, uh, unfortunately, the, the jump um, site is being renovated. So um, the city staff will put this on the Parks and Rec uh, landing page. And um, uh, Leanne can all also um, send this to you. Uh, we could get it packaged up uh, as well. So not to worry um, if you want to look at this plan in a little bit more um, detail as well. Uh, next slide, please. And this just uh, highlights some of the things that um, I just talked about with a little bit uh, bigger pictures. Um, the idea of the centralized dock, formalizing some parking areas. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend that they be, that we put a bunch of asphalt uh, in this site, but there's some sustainable ways in which 
um, the gravel parking lots could be improved a little bit. The idea of a sense of arrival, um, if there's something that we could do uh, on the street or some improvements to the signage, I think that would be something that would help create a sense of place. <clears throat> um, I think I've covered everything on this list, uh, Shika. So next slide, please. So for us, the next steps are to address uh, any further feedback we get, um, prepare the plan uh, to go to council um, and present that at council. So keeping in mind, that's another point of engagement um, when we take it to council uh, to provide any um, comments or feedback at that time as well. Uh, next slide, please. So um, for this evening, um, and we'll pull up the chat and monitor it, you have two, two options. If anybody wants to speak, um, they can raise their hand and uh, we'll go down uh, the list um, and let you know that you can ask your question. If you're shy or you just don't feel like talking tonight, uh, if you want to type your question in the chat, uh, and we can uh, go back and forth between uh, answering um, somebody's hand raised uh, versus uh, seeing if we can answer any questions in the chat. If we don't have the answer tonight, we'll go away and, and get some answers for you. Um, and I know um, staff will be able to help with any questions as well this evening. So. Um, I see a hand uh, and ap apologize. There's some nondescript and some interesting names. So Bill S23, I see that you have your hand up. Um, I do. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I want to go into a few things if that's okay. The first one is, is that a fish hut is desperately needed in these plans, I think, um, as a suggestion. Uh, what do you what do you mean by a fish hut? Because well, when, when you say we, that, I think I think ice fishing. So, what do you mean by um, a fish hut? A, a, to clean the fish. Uh, I see. Right, okay. and normally it comes uh, with a sink and running water, and then um, outside of the fish hut would then be the uh, the freezer to to put the uh, the guts in, right, from cleaning the fish. Um, okay. What what that, happens that, to them right now? Just I'm I'm just asking. Just everybody's kind of like taking them back to their own trailer. They clean them there, and then they do have a freezer. It's up by the. Uh, I I didn't know this until this year actually. Uh, that they have a freezer. It's up by the uh, the main entrance where you actually can throw the fish guts into there, right? Of what you have left over. Um, now, the the other thing that I really want to comment on is the hydro situation. And the reason why I want to comment on that is because I noticed at the east side, um, there wasn't any plan for any additional hydro. I seen it on the west side, but not on the east side. On On the east side, and this is a problem, is that we're getting into trailers where they're saying in the park at 10 years time, right? You can no longer sell your trailer outside the park. I think that might need to be expanded. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because the second you bring in newer trailers into the park, you're getting a lot more hydro in these trailers that is required for them to run. Right. And so, we're so, specifically finding this out because we have to run down and hit the main breaker quite often. And the reason why is because we're getting newer trailers around us. Right. So, Bill, I just want to clarify that um, that that high, that's just symbolic. The hydro is okay. being looked at for the whole site. So, OK, um, yeah, just just for clarification. Um, OK, there. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, no, uh, 
important um, comments that uh, that we've heard to date with regards mm -hmm. to uh, the breakers being tripped and uh, yeah. So yeah. And then one 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 last suggestion um, might be again, um, and and I I'm just putting this out there as a suggestion. I wonder if uh, like a kids water park. I know they're expanding the beach and I think that's awesome if, if that happens and especially soon. Um, but that just might be another suggestion and um, yeah, the boat launch is already done and then that's it. So thank you very much. And I think this is great. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I see somebody else has their hand up. So Sophia. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm just here with my parents um, who've been there forever and same with me and my partner and I have our own place as well. Um, I just have a couple questions. I'll try to be as quick as I can. Um, you mentioned something about um, regular lot sizes. So does that mean that you will, I mean, not you, but it's being considered that certain lots are going to be essentially now two lots because they're considered large as opposed to others? Th that is something that's being uh, looked at. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm being honest. I don't. I don't really know how well that's going to go over <laughs> with a few people in the park. I'm sure. Um, and also, do we have any kind of pull? Like we've been there for years. My dad's coming up on sixty years at the park. Um, how much say do we have as the people who camp there with what actually gets done? Um, so it's all part of the process. So, um, uh, you know, we've heard um, your feedback here with regards to to this, the lot sizes and, and appreciate that um, comment. Um, it's, uh, you have to keep in mind that part of ensuring the sustainability over time um, could include ideas like that, but um, council has the final say in what they're going to accept as far as recommendations. Um, we as the team and staff are, will put our best foot forward with regards to what we think will allow the park to um, maintain itself over the long term. And also, um, if just keep in mind, if, if big changes like that um, are provided as recommendation. It's not something that would just happen overnight. So, so the city's not going to come in and um, immediately uh, make bigger lots into more regular sized lots. It would be a process over time. So, right. for example, uh, if somebody was was leaving their site uh, and that was one that that would were to be um, further divided up, then that would be at that time. So uh, okay. it, it, it's not something where the city's just gonna come in and okay. say you're here. Yeah, so a process. And uh, uh, that's why I say that um, at council, if you still have further concerns uh, with the recommendations we put forward, that would be the process in which to, to address that now. But um, I hope in understanding that their short-term, long-term um, goals to the plan that um, the the dividing up of, of larger lots is probably not going to be a short-term um, item that would happen. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Shika, I can't see the chat bar. Okay, there we go. Um, so I have a question that says, will this document be shared with everyone? Um, as I mentioned, we'll get the presentation um, posted on the uh, rec, uh, rec, Parks and Rec uh, landing page for the city. And um, if need be, uh, you can ask for a copy of that and we can, we can send that out through Leanne. Uh, um, there's a question here. How will oh, where did it go? How will these plans affect our fees going forward? Um, 
I don't know, Jen, uh, that's not, I don't think one that either staff or our team um, would be able to, to address today. Um, there would be recommendations in the report. For example, we know that hydro is a big one. We also know that um, septic and addressing the sewer situation is important as well. Um, and those um, come with costs. And so then if those recommendations went forward, then there would have to be, uh, it would have to be figured out like how um, those types of infrastructure and future improvements um, get paid for, whether that means increases in fees or not, um, sure. you know, that, that would be part sure. of the process going forward. Yeah, I can just add to that a little bit, Catherine, too, that um, the report when it's presented to council will be um, will be requesting um, adoption in principle. So um, what that generally means is that, you know, we will be looking for council to endorse it on a high level. So um, moving forward, those short, medium, long term um, uh, recommendations they will likely need to go to council um, again, whether it's through a, uh, a capital budget request, or if we were looking to make changes to um, particular, uh, the fee structure, for example, uh, that's out, that's beyond kind of the um, annual increase, then um, like the cost of living increase, then we would be uh, required that we would be sending a message, sorry, we would be preparing a report uh, to council to get that um, fee increase outside of the regular cost of living. So there are opportunities by this being accepted, approved um, by council uh, this year does not mean that, that it kind of uh, there's no more further discussion about it moving forward. So there still is an opportunity to have those discussions and there might be modifications to the recommendations that come out of the master plan based on uh, feedback in, in the future. Uh, but so there, there still will be um, a possibility to generate some feedback. We wouldn't just kind of go ahead and make substantial fee changes without um, getting some feedback from the community uh, and not without going to council. So hopefully that um, that makes sense and, and provides a little bit of um, comfort knowing that there still is like for any major projects, for any major changes, we would still be going to council on those individual pieces moving forward. Um, so there's a few more questions in the chat. Uh, the plans for the green space are exciting. Does it include a plan for control of goose droppings? It's a horrible problem right now. Um, so there's only so much that can be done about the geese. Obviously, making sure there's no um, mowed um, grass right up to the edge of the water is helpful. Um, I, I don't know... Uh, what else the park currently does um it's, uh, can... it's a tough one yeah. because uh they're they're a problem and you're mm -hmm. in the water <laughs> yeah as anyone that's been there for the past number of years knows we did install um it was kind of a pilot project to see if we could control uh the geese and uh, i i don't believe it was really that effective um, initially, uh, until the geese figured it out and, and re the city does, uh, implement and try different methods to divert the geese from coming into uh, parkland and, and places where they're not really, uh, wanted, we have yet to find a solution. So, um, you know, if anyone has that solution, we're always, uh, willing to listen. So, um, mm -hmm. You know, as part of this plan, as Catherine said, you know, keeping the uh, green space kind of back from the shoreline and have not having it mowed is is one of those ways that we that we try to uh, lessen the geese uh, coming up onto the onto the green space. But we haven't found a solution yet. 
Um, there's a comment here, no beach on the east side. Um, there's no existing beach on the east side. And we do know that uh, while we're um, suggesting some improvements to the beach on the west side, that there are a few um, steps that that will have to go through with regards to the Conservation Authority and the Ministry. Um, anything that disrupts the um, shoreline um, requires permits. Um, so it's not something that we we considered as far as adding um, a beach uh, to the east side um, versus uh, improving the docks over there right now was um, suggested as more of a priority. Could a kayak and paddleboard launch be considered? Um, I would need a little bit more description as to what would be different than um, what's already there as far as uh, there's a existing boat launch that kind of goes uh, into the wetland area um, and then we'll, you'll have the new um, boat launch on the other side um, so if if someone could provide you know specifically what they're looking for as far as something for kayaks and paddle boards that that would be helpful um is there a list of things that are being recommended to start away start right away uh not yet that's that's going to be one of our next steps um is to 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 get the list of things for recommendation and um provide some suggestions on which uh, which could go um, right away. Do we have a surplus in revenue and how can we see the spend of the park revenues? We know the spend of the waterfowl park was not the best way to spend. Um, so there will be some financial information in the master plan, um, but I, I would think, um, Jen, that if somebody wanted this information, it would be, it's, it's public knowledge. So. Um. Yeah, uh, certainly the um, high level information regarding um, the financials for the property can be shared. It's public information. I do want to just clarify. I think it was Craig that mentioned that um, it was like 400 or $500,000 that is being generated. I want to be clear to say that that's gross revenue. Um, and that's not, uh, you know, not taking into account uh, the expenses that go along with uh, the operation of the park. Um, the other piece I wanted just to clarify here is that the waterfowl park that's being mentioned, that was done by a community group along with um, partnership with some, the two different conservation areas, uh, local conservation areas. So that wasn't an expense, that wasn't at the expense of, um, the municipality. Um, thank you for doing this. All the plans that you are proposing are legitimate. Are the parks financial available? Okay, well, we just answered that question. That's good. <laughs> uh, is there anything to be done this year? Which are the first things to be upgraded uh, or implemented? Um, so I think we just... Uh, answered that, but um, just to mention that the new boat, boat launch um, is being done. Um, so that should be finished for next year. Uh, mostly the goose droppings are in the main park. So when we have an event in the social committee in the main areas, I'm not sure, sorry, I'm not sure what that's getting at. Oh, our daughter chases them. Well, maybe, um, she could hire herself out and <laughs> chase the geese for everyone. <laughs> um, can we get a dog park? A lot of us have furry friends, thank you. Um, that's, I guess that's something that we can talk about, but I'm not sure that there's enough real estate um, to put in a decent sized, um, dog park 
Um, but definitely we could um, re respond to that with regards to a suggestion. We would love to have weekend lots. I have a lot of friends that just have a pop-up trailer, okay? So that is something that we're, we are considering, um, the addition of new lots, which could be either be seasonal or um, permanent. Um, so something that we are looking at. Can we get Wi-Fi put in? Um, I, that's not something I can... <laughs> Yeah, I can provide a comment on that. So there currently is Wi-Fi, um, as uh, likely you all know, it's it's around the um, staff building. So, um, you know, it certainly doesn't service the whole park. Uh, we wouldn't be looking at providing service for the entire park um, at this point. Um, just some comments. The dog park is an excellent idea. We have goose droppings on the kids' shoes at Water Day. Um, yes. I don't see any more hands or um, any more questions. Hopefully I didn't miss, um, miss any in the list. Um, but if you've got any further suggestions or comments, um, please email them. Sorry, email them to Leanne. Sorry in advance if you get bombarded. <laughs> um, and uh, it'll take us uh, a few days, um, but uh, then, like we said, it'll, the presentation will be posted on um, the city's website. So if you you know want to look at the plan. Uh, and have any other suggestions. Um, we had some some good ideas that we didn't think about. Um, so we'll definitely uh, look into that uh, and uh, see if any of them are feasible. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Leanne um, will let everybody know um, if there's any um, further um, feedback before we go to council um, and then when the council date is not only will it be posted uh, on the city's website but she can let everybody know that the draft uh, recommendations will be going to council I'll just okay. mention um, if they have uh, suggestions that they want to email, it goes to trailerpark at coorthelakes.ca. Everyone should have that email because that's where I communicate from just in case I went missing or something that other people have access to that email. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, that would be great. Okay. Um, so thanks everybody for joining in. Appreciate the feedback. I don't know, Jen, if you had anything else. Um, to add? Oh, yeah. Um, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, your feedback is important to us. So, um, and thanks, uh, Catherine and your team for putting the presentation together. It was uh, provided some good information. And uh, we will uh, have this on the website. Uh, just give us a week or so, or a few days at least. I guess it's only Tuesday. Maybe by the beginning of next week, we'll have something up um, on the website so that uh, you can um, continue to look at it and provide comments if you'd like. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you.